What's up everyone? And Nell here with the final combat guide covering Team Laura, who's the last of the three teams to talk about in Golden Country. So as opposed to Team Adam, who's all offense all around, or Team Hugo, who's entirely focused on tanking, Team Laura has a bit of a hybrid set going for her. You have Jin, who's probably the absolute strongest offensive blade in the game, and Hayes, who's the only pure healer and pure support character the party has if you don't count Foresight. Laura herself has arts that kind of synergize with both, but is more focused on damage and breaking for her team and the entire party. So the typical playstyle here is likely going to be to stay on Jin until you find yourself in a situation where you need Hayes' situationally useful abilities. Jin is extremely strong and the party buffs that Hayes provide don't really matter when Jin by himself is more valuable to the team as a whole. But enough of the background information, let's take a look at this team. So when Laura has both of her blades at S+, she can reach an auto attack of 1737 with her legendary weapon, and she also gets 20% chance to attack again after each auto attack. Nothing too useful there, and her driver stats aren't exactly anything special with a fairly low critical rate and average defenses. For accessories, I like to have the beta scope on her that you get from the Cave of Ceiling, just because she's the primary breaker of the party and driver combos are very useful. Jin doesn't need a lot of extra damage, and Haze isn't really a great source of damage anyway. My other accessory is Ice Headband because Jin has a fairly high critical rate and his specials hurt a lot. Other options are of course additive sources of damage or even a metal if you aren't running a pouch setup that allows you to infinitely cancel arts and want to use Laura's talent arts. So for pouch items, I like to run the standard strong pouch items that focus on art recharge and special damage since those are the most useful stats to have. So other things to say about Laura is that she has a break art which is the primary reason that she has the beta scope. It's worth noting that you can get a 3 crown master scope from doing her charts so breaking becomes easy, even easier, but by that point you probably have already destroyed the game anyway. Her talent art is more useful for early game than later, it halves your current HP to recharge all of your arts, not too useful unless you just don't run around art recharge pouch items. So for her blades, I like to run a Moon Matter Quartz chip on Jin for the 50% critical rate, and a Sunlight chip on Haze just because her critical rate is so low anyway, and the extra healing and auto attack can be marginally valuable. So for Aux Cores, I like to use Affinity Max attack and Outdoor attack for both of them as well as an additional Hunter's Chemistry on Haze, and she's one of the best options for it. Feel free to replace this with something else if you like. So let's take a quick look at their affinity charts now. The first ability that Jin has on his is Transmigration, which increases damage by 50% every time you swap between Jin and Laura. And this is pretty valuable to have, and pretty easy and viable source of additive damage to stack in over the course of a fight. His next ability is Full Resonance, which gives him 100% damage and 30% damage reduction at max affinity, which is pretty incredible unconditional damage and tankiness that helps out Team Laura a lot. Very good and a very strong ability. His last ability, Mind's Eye, is also crazy good. Critical damage is an independent multiplier, and being able to do 80% more is super valuable as a damage source, and all three of these abilities combined make Jin's damage outputs absolutely crazy. His three specials also have damage boosting effects and are very strong in general and in chain attacks. Ice Revolution is the best one, and using the, it uses the Heavenly Disrupt animation and does additional damage to higher level foes, which admittedly isn't too useful at level 99, but it's still nice if you're fighting a certain bird that can't be broken at all. So as for Haze, all three of her abilities focus on party support. Everyone takes 20% reduced damage, does 50% more damage, and has 40% increased resistance to debuffs. These are nice things to have, but overall the value of Jin as a damage source is going to outweigh most of these benefits, and Team Laura will get even more damage reduction with Tenet Jin anyway. Hay still has decent healing potential with her specials and arts, and her talent art can be marginally useful if you're in a bad situation, but overall Jin is the shining star here. So let's quickly talk about their talent arts. If you have lots of art recharge and want to use up all your arts, you can stop enemies from acting for 5 seconds. This has never seemed to be the most useful thing to me, but it can definitely help if you're struggling. You just need to stack as much art recharge as you can. So as far as Jin, his talent art is pretty basic, just buffing him slightly if you consume recoverable HP. But with all that being covered, let's show off what these two can do. So the audio for these clips got a little bit messed up, so there's not going to be any fighting background noises this time. I know you're all very upset about that. But let's actually get into this fight. So the general thing you're probably going to want to do is stay on lore until you get a break at the very least. You have enough art recharged where it's not a big deal to do this, and you can use her specials too. They, they do a decent amount as long as Jin is active. And then once you get that break, you're going to want to finally swap to Jin. You can get a topple if your teammates don't do it first. And you're probably going to want to use some of his specials, because they'll do a lot of damage and apply a quick ice orb and, and get you ready to start a chain attack pretty soon. Jin's arts aren't the best by themselves, that's why you kind of want to stick to using Laura's art. She has a great cancel attack art, and she also has the break art, which is kind of what you want to be spamming. And as you can see right here, I was able to get another break pretty quickly, because of the beta scope, and that's very nice. 
So that's the typical playstyle, honestly. Just spam arts with Laura, use the art recharge stuff with her. And if you need to, you can also use her talent art if you need to, like, access a break really quickly or something. And then when you finally get your driver combo, you swap to Jin, use a special, maybe use one or two arts, and then you can just kind of chain attack when you get low HP enemies like this. And of course, if your gets the bird that can't be broken, then you can just swap around and use as many specials as you can, and then finally chain attack. So I only get, I only did three Vanguard switches this game, so I'll have 150% out of that 200% damage, but it doesn't really matter too much, because I still got an additional 100% damage and 80% critical damage on my skill tree, and the extra 70% damage from the affinity, from the ox cores, I mean. So as you can see, we already kind of ended him pretty quickly here, just showing off how powerful Jin specials can be in chain attacks. As I'm sure you've seen from my previous videos, he pretty easily outdamages pretty much anyone else in chain attacks, and just in general, just because of the outstanding skill tree he has. He's probably easily the strongest character in Torna, and definitely pretty fun to use because of that. I would say the one, like, major weakness he has is that... Well, it's not really a weakness. I'd say the one thing about him is that, since his special damage is already so strong and chain attacks are the main source of damage, you don't really need to control him to, like, worry about doing this type of damage, which can be a positive and a negative, I guess. Like, he's probably not the most effective character to control as far as, like, speed killing or anything, but he definitely hurts a lot, and he's definitely really fun to use. So here it is one more time, Heavenly Disrupt, Ice Revolution, whatever he wants to call it now. Last hit will do, like, over 500,000 damage, and... That's only with a 688% multiplier and no fusion combo, so Jin does a lot of damage. He does so much damage there is barely a fight to show off here. But typically, like I said, the strategy is stay on Laura until you get your break off, swap to Jin, use a special, use a few of his arts, swap back to Laura, and you can also swap between them to get your Vanguard bonuses too if you need to. And now with that being said, we're going to move on to Haze really quickly. Overall, the strategy is going to be pretty similar, where you want to stay on Laura most of the time to try to get breaks as much as possible. Haze can actually smash on her switch, so I'll try to show that off really quickly. And Haze herself, she has a healing art, she can heal on um, an attack art, and she has some okay damage, an okay damage art. And she also gets the ability to stop enemies if she needs to, so there's her smash right there. Her specials are also focused on healing, and the party also has a bunch of additional buffs right now. As you can see here, here's Winds of Time. It stops um, Gibson from doing anything for like a little bit of time and stops him from doing a move. It doesn't seem to be like too useful unless you're like spamming it and just stopping him from doing anything. But it does stop you temporarily if you need to like quickly heal or use a special or something to make sure your party doesn't die. But overall the strategy is going to be pretty similar where you want to try to just um, focus on breaking with Laura and... To be honest here, Hayes's, um lack of damage is probably going to be why you want to stick on Jin most of the time anyway, and only swap to Haze if you absolutely need to. As you can see here, my damage is just much less than I was doing before. Which isn't to say that Haze is useless by any means, but she's definitely not a Jin here. Overall, though, the main strategy with Team Laura that you want to employ is using a lot of driver combos and using your other blades as when you situationally you need them. Jin for damage and Haze for healing. There's not much more to it than that. Jin's probably the best blade that you can use in Golden Country just because of his massive damage. And Haze can be useful for healing or stopping the enemy if you need her. And her support abilities can be marginally useful as well. There isn't really much else to be said about this character though, so we'll try to end it off right here, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching, and sorry if my audio is a bit of a problem this time. Hopefully the nice Colony 6 music made up for it though. With that covered, we're basically done with all the guides for this expansion. There isn't exactly a lot of stuff going on to talk about or make additional guides for, so thank you all for watching these. I'll probably make some final thoughts or review video for Golden Country pretty soon, so please look forward to that, I guess. Other things I want to do in the future is remake some earlier guides like the Poppy one with updated information that we now have, so I'll try to get to that as well. I really enjoyed Golden Country, so I hope you guys did too, and I hope you learned something from watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see my future Xenoblade content, because I've still got a few more things planned, and a few more tasks I want to accomplish, like speedruns and challenge mode. So with all that being said, thank you all once again for watching and supporting me, and have a wonderful and blessed day.